but you know what my interest in these guys is all of them is that it presents a range of responses that are you, you know uncompromising and honest responses to what's happening uh ITS concluded it broke with Kaczynski they're apostates that's why he hates them aside from the fact that they put him in jeopardy when you know when people mention him because that's you know that's definitely a line that prison won't let him cross uh uh and would shut off his ability to communicate which is the thing he's most passionate about that i can see um but so but the its sense that okay uh this isn't going to be done. We're not going to win this revolution. We're not going to find a Lenin, you know, who can lead the people. As I told Ted in my post journalist correspondence, like, you know, the, the Lenin offered people, you know, the peasants real freedom and, you know, the, the, uh, a, just, a more just world. Uh, he, because Kaczynski is offering them, you know, a hunter gatherer lifestyle and mass die off that doesn't ring the same populist message. It's never going to, it's a loser. I said, <laughs> yeah, you know, the propagandist, you suck. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, even if that's where he wants to get to, he can't say it, you know, nobody's going to follow that. Uh, and the same way ITS came to the conclusion that's not going to happen. Uh, and we're, you know, they're, they're, they sort of, looked to the indigenous tribes that resisted the Spanish conquest and admired the tribe that fought the longest knowing they would lose. And this is sort of a tradition that also was in the American Indians. You know, they were split between the youth who wanted to use weapon, you know, modern weaponry and the traditionalists who said, well, if we do that, we're not Indians. Anymore. We're not, you know, tribes at the creeks or, or Navajos or whatever. Uh, you know, there's truth to both sides of that argument tragic uh uh and we're all giving up our heritage you know this is where it intersects with the right wing in order to live in this world and function effectively um and raise our children as abe would say so you know i think there's a truth to what they're arguing it's horrible and it's not going to do any good and and so why even bother why not just let it happen and not be part of this violence and horror? Uh, but I, I think what's interesting is that these solutions are coming up. Paul Kings North withdrew from the climate change movement and decided and gave me the advice of, you know, I said, I'm not a backwoods kind of guy. I'm not going to retreat to Northern Ireland and, you know, raise vegetables. I like the city. I, I live in New York City. And he said, there's plenty you can do there. Uh, he just believes that the global fight is lost and that we can do the best we can with our communities. Um, there's a beauty to that argument. ITS says what it says. Kaczynski says what he says. Jacoby's still looking for an answer in his, his sweet, earnest way and written fairly rigorous way. I like that. I like John. I just saw him recently. Um, uh, uh, you know, and but these sort of represent the range of responses I think more people are going to catch up with. And I think that as people see, you know, in an undeniable way that their farmlands are drying up and burning away and that their condos on the Miami beachfront are going to lose value and that their investments in sunk, you know, in, in various industries are going to start to evaporate, taking their retirement savings and their kids' college funds and stuff there's going to be something of a wild reaction all across the world. And it's going to take one, you know, it's going to go into some of these early forms. Maybe it'll find other forms, but we will find, and I, it blows my mind again, that people don't see this. Uh, we will see a lot more of those things happening as, as, as the problem becomes more visible. Uh, we're already seeing this rise in, in the right wing, uh, fascism, essentially, you know, um, uh, the re retreat behind borders, which is maybe not irrational when there's hundreds of millions of people on the move because of climate change and various other things. Um, so, you know, it's like you study, if you're a scientist or a government, responsible government official, you know, you should study and rather than deny what's happening. You know, we put 
we, we you know we put Eugene Debs in prison uh, for protesting the First World War, who was uh, you know the head the the wonderful head of the and you know decent and sweet and idealistic head of the the railroad union. Uh, uh, we should have listened to him because you know. 20 years later, we had the Great Depression, and we finally had a mass response that that triggered some of the solutions that he was looking for, which, you know, was again denied as soon as it was economically possible uh, for a whole host of reasons. I don't want to just blame the capitalists. You know the big capitalists, the you know the the, the syndicate. What, what did they call them back in those days? The, tycoons the or the bar- barons, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah the barons. Uh, yeah, all that stuff. You know, uh, that's also a simplification. You know, uh, and a simple, radical, good, feel good kind of solution in L.A. Uh, and I don't think you know. I think all of those are denials of reality. And if we're going to be honest about what's going to happen, we're going to we're going to start to look at some of these just as you would study disease you would study the outbreak of the disease and the and the you know the the viral pathways through which it spreads and that's what epidemiologists just does do and that's you know this is an epidemiological problem that's going to get worse so i don't i you know i i i pitch this story to a renowned and I, i admire it very much uh um um uh uh, activist kind of publication uh, involved in social justice causes. I don't want to trash them because I love them, but um, but you know their attitude was, well, we don't think it's going to get that bad. And my response was, <laughs> have you read the science? Are you keeping up with stuff? Yeah. And and you know the response that came back was like, yeah, uh, but yeah, we just can't go there. And my, I realized, you know, it was another one of these shocking things is that that whole social justice project that is so beautiful is if this stuff happens, is going to become completely irrelevant and overwhelmed. And that's, that's another form of like, we can't, we can't look that in the face. I mean, my idea is if you're really coping with what has become the present problem rather than you know, a, a smaller problem or a tr- historical problem or still not historical, but, you know, you're going to retool your whole magazine to this stuff. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is the, you know, it's like people who were like worrying about, you know, new forms of agriculture, you know, when industrialism was, you know, we taking the whole uh, traditional farming way of life away, uh, and the consolidation of farms that that sent seventy percent of America out of their habitat. Which you know, I mean, I don't, I don't. We're just not thinking about this stuff and how. I mean, if you look at if you look at what Wendell Berry wrote about in the unraveling of America, you know, this is a huge social wound that ties into all the stuff we're talking about that we're sort of like in blind to, you know, 70% of the country was working on farms and now it's what, 6%, something like that. I'm, I'm terrible with statistics, but yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's like, how can you not think about that when you're talking about, you know, the social problems of the city and the, you know, uh, right wing uh, resentment of centralization and states' rights and guns' rights and all that kind of stuff. You know, it's so much more complicated than people want to think. I, I just don't get it. Yeah. You know? 